what was the, the pain and the joy and the vision of the iPhone in your mind and the mind of the team, and Steve's mind and so on? Well, you know, there's multiple pains. You have to also look, there's not just customer pain, but there's business pain, okay? And it's about the, so Apple now is getting out of that place where it was in 2001. Now people are starting to pay attention. Apple's starting to get in the culture again. It's becoming relevant. Cash is starting to flow. iPod is 60% of that, of the of the revenue, total revenue of Apple, doing on 85% market share. You're starting to get a wind at your back. You got confidence. Like Apple had been beaten down since probably the first time the Mac was, since the Mac, it was a beaten company ever since the Mac. So we're talking 15 years at that point, right? This is the first time you're seeing like, and Steve would proudly came in front of us and said, today I can tell you all of the employees, we are now out of debt. We paid off our debt. Mm -hmm. It was a joyous moment for him, right? And then ultimately for our team because no more debt, it's wonderful, right? <laughs> so now what you have is you have this successful thing changing the face of Apple and you hear these heavy stomping footsteps of the mobile phone industry, boom. And it's the feature phones at that time. They're adding cameras, they're adding color displays. They're seeing the success of the iPod and going, that's just, music, we have some storage, we can load music on our phones and we can do what the iPod does plus more. Mm -hmm. Boom, boom, <laughs> yeah. boom, right? And you're like, and how many mil hundreds of millions of them are being sold at that point? It wasn't billions yet, but it was still, you know, 100 million, 200 million a year. iPod hadn't gotten there. It was mm, for 20, 40, 50 million, something like that. So now you're like, okay, what are we gonna do about this? you know, Goliath, who wants to take our lunch, right? The schoolyard bully. And so well, there was one, let's partner with them. So iTunes Music Store was there. All of these phones are gonna need music. So they can come to the iTunes Music Store and get that music for those phones. Cause mm -hmm. it wasn't just about the hardware player at that point. It was about the software that you need on the desktop and the content that you needed to download. So now Apple had multiple legs of the stool as, as Steve would always refer to it. So now the mobile phone industry, okay, we're gonna work with them. They are going to make a, a an iPod shuffle basically mm -hmm. inside of a phone, can have 99 songs total and they're gonna come to our store and you're gonna, and it's like, okay, great. It's all gonna be well and good. And that became the Motorola Rocker Project. Apple and Motorola getting together. There's going to be software on the on this smartphone, or not smartphone, but feature phone, to hook to iTunes to get your music. It wasn't even downloadable over a cloud or anything because that that wasn't available yet. There wasn't have duty data networks yet. Um, it was a disaster from the beginning. Two different cultures, two different types of leadership styles. Uh, not necessarily the most competent engineers on 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 the other side. Mm -hmm. And it turned out to be an absolute horrible disaster. I watched the pains, because I luckily I didn't have to be a part of it. I watched the pains on Jeff Robbins' face each time we would meet. And he would be <laughs> like, I, these guys are just, you know, like, really? Do we yeah. have to do this, Steve? And he's like, we're contractually obligated. And when it came out on stage and Steve showed it, it was maybe a one minute, you know, Steve loves those extended, you know, yeah. like drawn out. It might have been a one minute, two minute kind of thing. And he literally threw that phone out of his hand as fast as he could. Yeah. Right. Cause it was horrible. So that, so there was the pain of we're not going to partner. So if we can't partner with these guys, we have to become one of them to actually compete. Yeah. To save the thing that is bringing Apple from, you know, that 15 years of malaise. Mm -hmm. Right. So then from that, we were made a prototype of an iPod plus phone, a classic with, um, well, it was an iPod, but it had a phone inside with all the music and all the other stuff. And you use your headset, wired headset to do the audio, mm -hmm. right? There was another project at the same time, cause we were doing videos in the, uh, uh, the iTunes music store, iTunes video store um, for music videos and movies. And it would be a full screen iPod. So instead of the, the classic, the way you know it, um, 
it would be full screen and it would have a virtual click wheel. You'd have a virtual, like single touch touch screen mm -hmm. that you could scroll, right? Think of maybe an, I, an iPhone like you knew it, right? And then there was a third project going on, not in, th those two were going on in my team, but the third project going on was the multi-touch screen technology to drive a uh, Mac tablet. And so that Mac tablet, that, that touchscreen technology, um, there was just way too much you had to change on the software and everything to be able to use a tablet, right? We see this all the time. Like people are like, there's not enough tablet apps today that are modified for tablet. They're just phone apps that are grown up, right? So then they would just be Mac touch stuff. So you'd have to have a whole developer community. You know, that probably wasn't the best place to take that technology first. So you take that technology, marry it with the full screen iPod and the phone stuff we were working because the, the iPod phone with a rotary dial was just like a rotary phone. We couldn't make that interface work well for data input. Um, you put those three together and now those were those, those three things that then created the form or the technology and the form inside what would become the iPhone married with a bunch of low level software from the iPod and manufacturer software and drivers and communication stuff combined with a very reduced Frankenstein Mac OS. And, and I mean that in the, the, mess, the best way. It means it wasn't Mac OS just changed a little. It was totally, things were hacked out and changed and th new code was inserted. And yeah. it really was a, a, a whole set of things from all different places to make that first iPhone OS. And then there was another team working on the apps and then another team working on the design of how it looked overall between all that stuff. So all of those things came together to create what we know as the first generation iPhone. And those are all probably fascinating engineering challenges. Correct. And great teams like <laughs> the creating the Frankenstein OS. That's fascinating because you're simplifying, simplifying, but then you're just pulling different stuff from, and you're basically inventing, I mean, they're probably not thinking of it that way, but a new era of computing, a new kind of computer. It really is Frankenstein. Right, and you didn't have to run Mac software. If you look at some of the other smartphones of the time, like Mac, Windows and stuff, they were like, we need to make sure it runs Excel and it runs Word or something like that in some reduced thing. This was like, no, 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 no. This was born out of entertainment. So we didn't have to go and take all the same application, you know, uh, all those other ones was about compatibility. This was about a whole new way of being. What did you think about um, the Steve Jobs presentation of the, the iPhone, the, the sort of the first iPhone, you know, phone, uh, internet communicator and yeah. an iPod in your pocket. Yeah, that you're going to sort of present the th you're announcing three new products kind of thing and then saying that it's all in one. Just this is a good example, one of the sort of historic mm -hmm. presentations of a product. Uh, uh, clearly there's like some showmanship that works, some reason it works. Right. It doesn't always work, it often doesn't work. But it did in in this case, and often did for Steve. What like how did that feel? Um, what part of the actually uh, the design process was that presentation? You know what I mean? Like from the early because you said sure, sure. So consider the why the press release at the very exactly. beginning. Exactly. Steve was doing that the entire time. He was working on that story from day one. Yeah. He was pitching us this, 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 and then this. And, and then he would look at our faces because you wouldn't, most people wouldn't, at least if you're working for him, wouldn't tell him what you really thought of what he was yeah. saying, but he would look at your faces. Yeah. And then he would talk to a few real trusted confidence outside of the, uh, outside of the organization and see what they thought, right? And they could give him feedback on it and they could really challenge him, but they could, he would also look at their faces and go, mm. and so when you see that, mm, then he would modulate it and change it slightly and change it. So he was working during all of that time on the story and the storytelling, mm -hmm. right? And the whys while we're working on that and helping us refine it, just like the switch from plastic to glass, right? All the time working on that. So when he comes out on stage, he does something that every marketer is told not to do. Say, these three things are now combined in one. That is like the... That they say that that is the laziest form of storytelling possible for marketing, right? <laughs> yeah, right. 
but it was the best one because it was all those pains. It was yeah. like, I want my iPod, but I want my communications and I want my internet browsing because I want it on the go so I can look up things because it was in information. And when you were on the road, you had a laptop, you had an iPod and you had a phone that, and you had to carry all of these things with you at once. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna solve that pain for you and put it all together. So he was just showing you the pain and building that virus of doubt and going, it's now in this one magical thing. And he could come up and masterfully tell that story because he told it almost every day mm -hmm. to all of these people inside very quietly. And then it was just, right? It was like a, you know, a, a Tony Award winning play that had been worked on for 10 years. But also the human came through, the of timing. Course. It was all that, it was yeah. all of it. And of course he was dramatic at certain points and he would raise his voice and a wry smile or whatever it right. was. Right, that, that It was right all those touches. Magic. He was an actor as well as a storyteller. Yeah, and that- But, that... but it was the truth, right? Yeah. The truth came through. It was a nonfiction story. Yeah. And then he added those personal flourishes on top of it to, for dramatic effect. It's but, amazing. 